After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magd Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the woman in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Last weekend I went to San Francisco to go to uh, my cousin's wedding. And the, the wedding was fun, of course, like many weddings tend to be. But I also left that wedding full of hope. Full of hope because, well, I can see the hope all throughout that wedding. You can see it in the, in the smiles of the invited guests. You could see it in the faces of the proud parents. And then, of course, you can see it in the eyes of the newlyweds. For the most part, weddings are hopeful, full of hope. They're hopeful despite the fact that, well, many challenges lay ahead for that married couple. Challenges that will challenge their, their relationship, that'll test their relationship, that'll test their character. And then, of course, it'll test It'll test their own marriage. But when I left that wedding, I felt that hope, that hope filled that wedding. And not only did it fill the whole wedding, but when I, when I left that wedding, the hope stayed with me. And that, that hope really looks at the challenges and laughs in the face of those challenges because that hope is the hope that comes from what we celebrate here today, the resurrection the resurrection of Jesus. In a very similar way, what we celebrate here tonight, for those who will be baptized and confirmed, it's in a very similar way, it's kind of like a, a wedding celebration where each of you who will be baptized and confirmed, you will unite yourself with a person. You will unite yourself with that person, Jesus Christ. So you too will face similar challenges that, that married couples face, Challenges that will test your own faith. Challenges that will test your relationship with Jesus. Test your relationship with the church. But also, you receive that same hope. That same hope that comes from the resurrection. That same hope that we celebrate today. So all of you who will be baptized in a few moments, will be confirmed as well, I want you to just take a moment, very quickly, very quietly, and take it in. Take in this very special, this very joyful moment. Because this hope that you receive, this joy that you feel, it'll sustain you. It'll sustain you on your path, on this spiritual path that you begin here tonight. But not only will that sustain you, but look around, this community will sustain you. We'll sustain you with our own prayers. We'll sustain you with our own support. But in a very real way as well, you will sustain us with your own hope, with your own prayers, with your own support. Because tonight you enter into this faith community. And that's what a faith community does. We support one another through prayer and through this hope that we all share. That's what all those readings we just heard about are about. It's about this hope that we all share. It's the hope in this story, this history of salvation. 
which is imbued in our entire story, our entire lives. Everything that we just heard, it's imbued with this idea of hope, which began with the creation where God created everything out of nothing. That story of salvation continues on with the resurrection of Jesus from the dead to new life. And that history of salvation continues on today, right here in Hollywood, with your baptism and with your confirmation. So tonight, not only do you enter into this story of salvation, this history of salvation that we all share, but all of you as well, you begin to write it. All of you are, be, are going to be given a proverbial pen tonight because you'll be writing this story of salvation which does not end, but it continues with all of you as members of this faith community. So as we continue on in this baptism, as we continue on in this celebration, know that you are all part of it, that you are all writing it. You are all part of this story because all of you are being given a mission tonight. And it's the same mission that all of us baptized Catholics have It's the same mission that Mary of Magdalene was given by Jesus. Go and tell my brothers and sisters about me. Maybe a while back, someone who had that same mission told you about Jesus. Now you all have that same mission as well. So go and do likewise. Creo que es casi un milagro que yo estoy aquí, que yo soy en cura. Y yo fui ordenado hace un año. Porque antes de ser jesuita, mi vida era muy diferente. Fui dirigida hacia una manera conquistando el mundo. Pues, antes tenía una hipoteca, una carrera en las finanzas, y también, uh, pues, tenía sueños de ser algo diferente. Pero al mismo tiempo tenía susurros desde mi corazón que estaba llamándome a ser un cura. Pero debido a que donde estaba yo, mi vida, yo sabía que era casi imposible hacerlo. Pero cuando los susurros se conviertan en, en gritos, pues tenía que empezar mi camino nuevo hacia el sacerdocio. Y después de mucha perseverancia, mucho trabajo, muchas oraciones a la gracia de Dios, pues me cambié mi vida, me convertí en un sacerdote. Hay un dicho en la Biblia, un versículo que dice, nada es imposible con Dios. Y cuando pienso, cuando veo mi vida, pues creo mucho en este versículo. Pues todos los versículos, en todas las uh, lecturas que acabamos de oír en esta, esta noche, se trata, se, se, se muestra esta verdad. Nada es imposible con Dios. Pues Dios, quien creó todo desde no, nada, el quien puso orden desde lo que era caos, también el que liberó, liberó los uh, israelitas desde, desde la esclavitud de los egipcios. También en la historia de Abraham, él dio un hijo cuando él tenía muchos años. Y también acabamos de oír la historia de Jesús, quien fue resucitado. Y lo que estas historias tienen en común es el hecho de que las situaciones fueron cambiadas milagrosamente. ¿No? Cuando oímos estas historias, podemos pensar que estas historias pues, no, puede, no, puede, no pueden cambiar, pero fueron cambiados. Y esto, esto es el don, el regalo de la Pascua, que nosotros podemos cambiar nuestra situación. Pues quizás podemos pensar que, que estamos uh, es, en esclavitud de algún tipo de adicción. Podemos pensar que estamos muertos en una manera. Podemos pensar que nuestra vida es como un caos. Pero Jesús, Dios, pueden cambiarlo. Jesús pueden ponerlo en orden. Eso es el gran regalo, el gran don que la Pascua nos da. Pues creo que ustedes que van a ser bautizados hoy, esta noche, ustedes van a, ser, van a tener este su situación va a ser cambiado mucho, porque ellos van a morirse y van a, ser, van a tener la vida nueva, van a tener una vida revestida con Cristo. Su situación va a ser cambiado milagrosamente, milagrosamente. 
Pues, creo que también es casi un milagro que ustedes están aquí. Pues, vivimos en un, en un mundo donde, en un mundo muy secular, donde hay muchos, mucho ruido llamándolos para ser algo diferente, para ser rico, para tener poder, para ser lo que sea, para ser feliz. Pero a pesar de todos estos ruidos, ustedes oyeron y contestaron la voz de Dios para ser bautizados, para ser católicos. Y por eso es un gran día de alegría, es un gran día donde tenemos que festejar, porque Dios puede hacer lo que sea, Dios puede, ser, puede poner el orden lo que era el caos. Y por eso celebramos esta noche y tenemos que dar la gracia de Dios por este gran día de alegría.